Hi guys, it's Mr. Ramage, and this week we've been kind of uh, slamming the Articles of Confederation, talking about uh, the reasons why the Articles failed, all the bad things about what's going to happen during the, the reign of the Articles of Confederation, uh, but actually we want to celebrate one really amazing and important thing that the Congress uh, was able to accomplish during the Articles of Confederation, and that is the creation and passage of the Northwest Ordinance. This is a super important part uh, because it's going to do something really uh, vitally important to the nation, and that's give it a process or a protocol for expansion. So uh, the country's going to grow. We have all this land, uh, but we need to know how the country's going to grow. How are we going to make new states? And that's one of the big things that the Northwest Ordinance is going to tackle. Um, go figure, Ohio is going to be the first states to come out of the Northwest Ordinance. And hey, we live in Ohio, so that's why it's something we have to study and something that's going to be on your test. So don't you forget this. So here's the process for becoming a state. First of all, um, the Congress would appoint a governor of this territory. And then once the population of that territory got to be about 5,000 people, uh, not 5,000 adult white male property owners, because those are the only people that can vote, so no women can vote, uh, no children can vote, obviously. Nobody under, no males under the age of 21 can vote, and no non-property owning white males could vote. So to vote, you had to be 21, you had to be a white male, and you had to own property in 1787. So once there were 5,000 of those dudes in the territory, uh, then the um, territory could elect its own assembly, and they would be able to start creating their own laws and start managing all their affairs and things like that. As the territory grew uh, and more and more people came to live in that territory, once they hit about 60,000 people, they could create and write their own constitution and be able to apply for statehood. So the Northwest Ordinance creates a process for territories to become states. The other thing that it does, and this is pretty important, is that it actually forbid slavery to move into these territories. So it specifically uh, banned slavery from spreading into these new territories. Uh, the other thing that happens in the Northwest Ordinance is the uh, setting aside of land uh, uh, and organizing public education. So we're gonna definitely have uh, government-supported public education existing in these new territories and then states. Uh, and also making sure that there was clear statements of religious freedom and freedom of speech and other similarities which were not yet part of the Constitution because a Bill of Rights had not existed yet. So the Northwest Ordinance contains some things that we're going to see turn up in our uh, Bill of Rights after the battle for the ratification of the Constitution. So that's the Northwest Ordinance. It sets up a process for territories to become states, and it also bans slavery into these territories uh, and future states. It creates um, a system of public education, it allows for religious freedom and political uh, speech, and those are all things that uh, don't technically exist yet, but will exist in our Bill of Rights. Uh, they're going to ask you about it in May, so be ready.